Hey, I'm glad you're here because I'm gonna share with you one of the quickest, simplest icebreakers that I know that fail-proof will trigger bursts of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> There are lots of different ways of inviting pairs to form. You could just simply ask people to go find their best friend, but it might be that you do something random, like find someone wearing the same shoes as you, or the same color top as you, for example. <laughs> and once you've found that partner, great opportunity to share, but at some point I wanna share this activity. First of all, I'll give them the sense that we're about to have a meal, imagining we're having a meal, and use their right hand, quite specific, their right hand is holding a tray of food. So I might have asked them what's their favorite move. So what's one of your favorite meals in the evening, Chad? Mango stir fried chicken. Mm, okay, <laughs> I, I'm gonna go stay in the area of um, curry, so maybe something vegetable green curry. So with that point, you then say, you actually are very interested in your partner's food. So you take your finger, your tasting finger, and place it into the food. Don't worry, it's not hot, you're not gonna burn yourself. And so from this position, you are now inextricably linked. So you've divided your whole room. Doesn't matter how large your group is, everyone is in a pair. And at this point, they're just waiting for that magic word. And here's what I find, Chad. When I say the word go, it works pretty well to start a game. So, I haven't explained what you need to do, but you could probably work it out. I could be speaking Mandarin, and you know, when I say go, you're gonna try and catch the finger of the person that has their finger in your hand. At the same time, you're gonna try and avoid being caught by your partner. All right, Chad, are you ready? <laughs> Oh, yeah. he slipped out. Got the <laughs> and idea. I pulled down here. I need to get that now, down. There was just two of us, and you could tell there was a trigger of laughter, and we knew what was going to happen. Imagine that with your conference or your training group or your group of students, whatever the case may be. That's the first version. In most cases, they won't know what to expect, and so they'll want to do it again. So they go straight back into it. You go and go. Ah, gotcha. And that's He's where the name comes from. <laughs> it's gotcha. Notice I know when I was going to say yes, yeah. <laughs> when I was going to say go. That's all cool, but like most of the things that Chad and I share online is there's just so many different ways of playing them. Here's a couple of quick ones. First of all, it's in the left hand or the right hand, so swap it out. Do the other side. Go! <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <laughs> all right, that's all cool. And there's lots of ways you might extend your arm by crossing it with your partner. Or maybe if you're in a larger group, so from twos, it goes to fours and goes to eights. You've now got eight people in a circle and you could actually extend your arm to another person. Here's another one I like. Maybe just with two people. Turn it upside down. So now the hand is upside down. You're placing your finger directly underneath. Go! <laughs> Same thing. I love it because I knew when I was You're like say seven go. for seven right now, Mark. You're <laughs> killing me. <laughs> so at this point, yeah, I could just keep on going with variations. Chad, in a moment, you might have something you could share too. But at this point, you might actually throw to your group and say, okay, in keeping the integrity of the activity, catching a finger in a palm, how else might we play or vary this activity? And that's then inspiring creativity. You've got this wonderful connection with the group and you've got enormous amounts and bursts of laughter. Here's another quick variation where you might be concerned about people touching. You know, that maybe that's a concern for whatever reason, but this is a great example. You're gonna place a card, any card, this just happens to be a Wii Engage card, but it might be a playing deck of cards. And I'm gonna hold it at the top here, and Chad, I'm gonna ask you to keep your forefinger and your thumb mm -hmm. on the outside, but just underneath the very base of it. And in this case, doesn't matter how far apart your fingers are, but you don't know when I'm going to say go. Mm -hmm. So, ah, oh. see, I so, didn't know you were gonna, okay, yeah, this exactly. is clever. I okay. didn't actually say go, but I just did that very, very quickly. So even when, if I said go, let's just see what happens. Go. Ooh. Oh. So I actually prefer the variation where it's a bit of a, you don't know what's coming. You just have to be ready to respond. And I'm gonna mention something towards the end of the video that is gonna make this really powerful and really purposeful for many of the groups that you meet. Oh! <laughs> You're watching this on YouTube, and inevitably, when you're watching something on YouTube, you're wondering, will this work for me? Will this work for my group? These two folks are really cheerful on camera. They seem to be happy. Like, my group's a little grumpier. I have done this with uh, some of the most grumpy groups on the planet. And in round one, before you've even said the word, the keyword, whether it's go or whatever else, yeah. um, the group has done something and they're already bantering, laughing, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. And uh, just one thing that I love about that is a mentor of mine uh, once said that laughter is nervousness leaving the body. Mm. 
And so as an icebreaker for students, like you want that nervousness to leave the body so that they can sit in their own skin and be comfortable. Exactly. And, and in the beginning, that's why you started with two people. Because even if only half your group are actively engaged, I guarantee you, after the first round, three quarters of them are. And within about two or three rounds, everyone is. And so two turns into four, turns into eight, and before you know it, you've got your whole group. Largest group I've ever done this with, over 810 people. It was a really large field, <laughs> but go! In it one was circle, not one, one circle. big circle. It was at summer <laughs> camp. You could just imagine how big that circle was, and I had to really shout. But everyone heard it, and it was like a ripple. <laughs> Almost to the other end, it was pretty cool. So we promised we'd come back and, and kind of explore and expand this concept, because you could just see it, Chad, as a fun game. And absolutely, it is, unashamedly. But we also live in the world where we want some purpose and meaning to be squeezed from these activities. So you take this basic concept of a physical connection, and the purposeful and meaningful connection here is maybe connected to your theme. I've worked with many conferences where connection, community, inclusivity is, is part of their theme. And so now you're taking what was a very fun game just to build warmth and energy with your groups, like your students, and then suddenly you go, okay, we're now, right now at this moment, connected. This mm. is the essence of community. Or, or it might be related to a sales training or something related to uh, communication, responsiveness, your ability to listen. You know, you need to be able to listen to that cue and respond really quickly to that situation. Mm. So you've taken the game, you've now made it make more sense. So uh, riffing off that, I led this at a, a conference once where I was emceeing in the uh, keynote that was about to speak was the author of Made to Stick. Mm -hmm. And so they're about to talk about this uh, really lovely book. And so instead of just saying go as the prompt, I said, I'm going to crack open uh, Chip and Dan Heath's book mm -hmm. and I'm just going to read a section of the book. And every anytime you hear the word, and I found a word that was uh, showed up enough, but not too much. Mm -hmm. So every time you hear the word the, probably not that one. Every time you hear the, uh, oh, they were talking about riders and elephants. It was a different book. So every time you hear the word elephant, you try to grab your other person's uh, finger. And so it relates to the content um, that you're going as opposed to just this like, because you don't want anybody at the end of that to wonder, why did we just do that? Yeah, particularly students, they're always going to be the first ones to say, why are we doing this? And like get past that with the laughter and then you make that really strong hook and then it's really clear, you don't even have to say anything. Love this idea. There are hundreds more you can get access to for free down below. In some ways, you got lucky landing here on YouTube because the internet is filled with eh, exercises. Like, don't do two truths and a lie or human not just because somebody paid to have it up front on Google. Um, and what's one of the things I love about uh, Playmio is it's like everything there is quality. And so you know that you're getting things that will work with your group.